We have Eric here from the fire department. We have Squire. We have Elias Gardner. And a phantom. Oh, I don't recognize. We have George. Audio. Is that you, Jeff? Yes, it is. Okay. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. It's uh, the budget committee, Peter. I'm sorry, what? It's the budget committee is here. Yeah. Bill, hi. Hi. George, hi. Welcome, everyone. Any amendments to the agenda, Sarah? No. Okay. So with that, we go right into our uh, our budget workshop with the uh, fire department up first. Eric, you're on. I'm on. Did you uh, all get a copy of it? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> Would you like me to yeah. uh, uh, add anything to to what you're looking at, or how would you like me to proceed? Justify why you want what you want. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, you want me to go line item by line item? I can. Sure. There aren't that many. Yep. Uh, with supplies, uh, we're going up. Uh, we would like to go up a hundred dollars to three hundred dollars. Um, equipment repair. We've run into some bigger expenses, so we raised that uh, uh, three thousand dollars. Like uh, what? I mean, tell us why. I mean, you want a hundred dollars? Well, because well, we've we've had a lot of repairs to do with with the uh, our engine, and then our uh, rescue is also aging quite a bit, and it's taking a lot to keep it on the road. Um, it's just costing more money. We've been we've been right right at or just over what we've budgeted, so we want to make sure we have some room there. Um, Equipment purchases, uh, we, we added a little bit there just because uh, we're running into where we're going to start needing to get some more um, safety gear. Um, let's see, uh, our what telephone. Has been, that? What's that? Our, what kind of safety gear are you talking our, about? Our bunker gear we have uh, is all aged out. Uh, we need to start phasing in some new stuff and it's expensive. Um, so we want to kind of spread that out as much as possible. So you're like stockpiling the money so you'll have some each year till you buy it or well, you know? or, or or replace as we need that's worse off than what we have now. Some 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 of our gear is is in worse shape than others. Uh and we need to go through and, and repair the replace the ones that are really bad. Eric, we had a discussion last year about air tanks. Yep. Is there anything in here for air tanks, or is that still yet to come? That's still yet to come. Okay. It's at the yep. bottom, Peter. I'm sorry, what, Mary? It's at the bottom. Bottom. It says up upcoming expenses. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We 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 haven't determined uh, what exactly that'll be yet, and we still have time to do so. Um. Our telephone uh, bill has been uh, increased because of uh, the the um, uh, we had to upgrade the internet because of the uh, um, what do you want to call it the uh, emergency management committee. Yes, thank you very much. I, I was drawing a blank there. The, the management committee was using it, so uh, we're hoping to maybe possibly drop that down but for now that's that's what we're running for our bill um for the year uh fast squad we we kept the same um courses and seminars we kept the same well why um, you never spent your fast squad money for the or at least for the last two years so why are you keeping it at a thousand well we has we just for supplies in case we need more supplies. Well, um, why would that be under supplies? Line one. Well, that's supplies for the fire department. It's two different things. Um, just, just on that subject. Yep. 
again, you know, what, what the, the process here, Eric, and I know this is your first go around in this yep. road, is you present your, your budget tonight, we ask questions, and then uh, when we get to putting the whole town budget together, depending on how we're doing, we may make minor adjustments. So there's an area yes. where, or, or make it, I shouldn't say minor adjustments, but there is an area where we could potentially cut that back if we needed to cut something back, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're trying to, uh, you know, if you need more bandages or fast squad supplies, nobody's going to say don't overspend your budget. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Yeah, as Peter Correct. said, I'm asking you to explain it. So if we have to go back and cut something, no. we understand why no, you put that, that in there. That's totally fine. I I don't bother. It doesn't bother me, bother me with the questions. That's for sure. Um, courses and seminars, we're, we're, we're trying to keep that. Uh, right at the same um let's see our electricity uh it so, is what it is i mean when you're keeping it the same and you've re underspent for two years can you tell us why i mean are there i mean that's the kind of explanation is really yeah, no that's there. fine so um you know we have uh we have more people that that we're hoping to get on the department that just costs money to take the classes that's all so we want to make sure we have that there so you're doing a recruitment Active we're all, we're always doing a recruitment. We're always asking and, and, and looking for new uh, new help. That's for sure. It's a right. constant. It's a constant. So, just a reminder: How many active members do you have? I don't have the number offhand, but I would have to say at least fifteen or eighteen. I can't remember exactly. I'd have to count them out. Who, to, who said 10? Was that anybody who knew? Yeah, this is Jeff. We've got oh, there's Jeff. Uh, oh, 10 there he is. on right now. <laughs> okay, so it's 10. I was thinking there was more. But we have one of the one of the new guys is involved in taking um, Firefighter 1 right now, and that's an expensive class to take. That's right. I forgot about that one. Yep. Um, uh, where was I? I think it was courses. Yeah, that that was the courses. Yes, we yes. The, um, after that was electricity. Um, that's pretty much just what it is. I those are the rates, I believe. Um, uh, fuel. Uh, just because we don't know where fuel prices are going to be in another year. Um, insurance and and. And our insurance, we didn't add because we don't we don't have any control over that. We don't know what that bill is going to be. Um, building maintenance, where we were just shy of of uh, the budget, so we kept it the same. Let's see, radio dispatch. We don't know what that's going to be yet. We haven't got the bill for that yet. Um, and that's another one we don't have any control over. Um, our dues and fees and training, uh, we were pretty close to that last year, so we kept it right at that, that same mark. Um, the forest uh, warden, uh, we're keeping that right at the same. Gas and diesel, we did drop that down some because uh, we just haven't been spending that. Um, so we're, we, we lowered that some down. Um, our stipends, we kept the same, uh, communication radios, uh, that we, we kept the same as well, uh, just for buying new rate. I think that's Jeff, if you correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's for our new, uh, newer radios and pagers and, and such. Yeah, that's, um, uh, because pagers tend to break. Yeah, quicker than the radios do, um, and pagers run. I I'm not sure the amount the pagers, but we usually end up getting um, one to two pagers a year, and our radios are getting uh, older. Mine is um, 13 years old, I believe, 13 or 14 years old. So they're starting to to 
get to the point where if we have a problem, we can't get them fixed. We have to get a new one. Radios are in the neighborhood of uh, six to seven hundred dollars. Right. And then uh, final is workers' comp, which we have no control over either. So we, we don't even know what that bill is yet. Um, I don't understand the math. It doesn't. That's not adding up to a subtotal of twenty four thousand. No, it's actually thirty four thousand six hundred and sixty. Well, then. Uh, and then when you add in the other stuff, what does that come to, Dorinda? Seventy thousand nine hundred and two. Oh. But the question is, where did those other figures come from? Uh, well, this is a spreadsheet that I was given, so I, I went with what whatever whatever we plugged into, whatever ratio that was in there. And a lot of those numbers are, I mean, not that it matters, but it's some of those numbers for previous years are incorrect. But um, I was just going by what you're what you're proposing for FY22. Got you, got you. And that, and that could be, like I said, this is the, the first time using this particular spreadsheet. I'm not sure what they hadn't plugged in for, for ratio numbers. It was, it was copied to me. Yeah. The rent, did you add the property casualty uh, workers comp and cap west figures or where did well, they come from? Those I, so I used what they were showing for numbers down below. So, um, no, I actually, um, what that, yeah, to total the 7902, but the numbers again are not correct. There's two issues here on the property and casualty for the FY21 budget. We actually budgeted $8,395 and that they have it in there as $7,834.90. Um, what was and the number? I'm sorry. What was the number again? Just so I can eight, correct it. Eight thousand eight three hundred and ninety-five. Okay. And the workers' comp was one thousand two hundred and seventeen. Those were last year's budgeted numbers. And if you want to, Eric, if you go back to the annual reports. Yeah. Um. If you look for the budgets for pre, all those previous years are in here. So if you wanted to update. Yeah, this I'll have to do that. I, I just assumed they were correct. The other thing too, in regards to doing actual numbers for the insurances, mm -hmm. I sent an email to the fire department on 10-3, followed it up on 10-9, still okay. have not gotten a response. And your workers comp is based on the number of firefighters and EMTs that you have on roster. So without that information, we don't get numbers. Gotcha. I didn't, I didn't, and I didn't see the, that email. So, well, I sent it to Doug and uh, Jeff. Jeff, yes. Okay. So why is it, why is it, this doesn't have anything to do with the budget, but just on that subject, why is it, guys, when all Dorinda needs you to do is tell us how many firemen you have and confirm that the trucks are the correct trucks, and with two emails, nobody can respond? That doesn't sound well, like I just checked. I just checked my email, and there's no email there. Well, I mean, I so, cc'd Sarah. Did you get them? Because I cc'd Sarah, the town clerk, on them as well. How about the last um, email I have is 18 August. No. Well, how about what is your correct email, Jeff? Pardon? What is your correct email? CJ Coons at myfairpoint.net. I've gotten emails from Dorinda before, but the last one I have is on 18 August. Well, it also went to Doug. Um, but if you give me the the email, should I start using Eric's email? I, I... Why, why don't we do that, please? Okay. Thank you, Eric. It's just so, it's frustrating, guys, when, when uh, and I don't know what the problem was in this case, but, you know, there's a long, long history of failure to respond from the fire department, and it's frustrating because Dorinda's trying to do her job and make sure the insurance is correct. Absolutely. And if we get the correct information, the insurance isn't going to be correct. 
So. Yep. Anyway. Well, we'll, we'll address comment? it. Peter? Yes. Um, so I'm just thinking about um, the fact that, you know, this is because of two bigger items, the equipment repair and the equipment purchase, that overall the budget's going up 10% um, from last year's budget. Um, and, and so, I mean, for better or for worse, we have a fire department, right? And so we need to support our fire department. And um, that means things like repairs and equipment purchases. And we still have a bond for a fairly new building. So, you know, we have to, these are things that we have to accept. And so I'm just wondering if, you know, now is the time to start to start the process. I mean, we are going to be doing this if we get the grant to do cap, you know, to do a capital budget, but we know that you're going to need air packs. Adding your equipment purchase by $1,200 doesn't buy you anything. I don't want to see that $1,200 just not wasted, but like not put to use towards the things that we truly need, right? Like air packs and the stuff that you mentioned down below replace rescue turnout gear whatever that is so you know i don't know how you as a fire department sort of want to look at that but like we are when we do a capital budget going to be asking you like what is your equipment what are you going to you know what do you see down the road that you're going to need um and you know there's various ways you can do it but you know, do we ask the town for a lump sum of money to cover all of this? Or do we have a capital budget specifically for the, um, meaning, I don't mean a capital budget. Do we have a, um, what is it called? A fund, res a reserve fund for the fire department that you build on every year so that, so that you have that money to buy the equipment or do you borrow the money to buy that stuff? And so rather hey, than like trying, just randomly and We've been trying for years to set up to where we have put money into a fund, be it for vehicles or whatever. We constantly get turned down on that. That well, we'll just do it one year with a with a, a bond because interest rates are cheap. We're we're not going to have a fund set aside, much like the the um, we do with the the land grant or the the money for the. Um, the $5,000 a year that the town votes on to put towards the uh, forest and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Well, all I would say guys, and those, those on the budget committee have heard this from me before is quite a few years ago, we changed our practice with regard to all the town equipment and we do not build up a fund of money uh, we borrow the money when we need a new truck or a road grader or whatever it is. And the philosophy has been right or wrong that by doing it that way, we're actually having the taxpayers who are getting the benefit of that equipment pay for that equipment rather than having people pay for it in advance and they may never see it. Now, you know, uh, we might as a group decide that we don't want to do that anymore and we want to go back to building up funds of money, but I'm just saying it has been our approach in the town not to do that for that reason. Mm -hmm. um, I, what, I would, what I would like to see happen, Eric, and, and I don't want you to do a whole bunch of work, but if you could work with Dorinda to get the correct insurance numbers, yeah, and also uh, Dorinda can give you the number for the bond. I mean, I like to see what the what the whole cost of the fire department is. And I know the, the bond is sort of off and never, never land. And you guys don't think about it, but boy, when we get that bond payment every year, it's, it's wicked. Yeah. No, I agree. Yep. So we have a sense, just so we have a sense of what the real, uh, what the real total cost is. And I have a couple of, couple of quick, quick questions. Um, bear with me a second here. Uh, so one was why you forecast, I mean, it just, it just, and I, I know you're trying to be conservative and you're working with a new, new spreadsheet, but for me, the heating fuel looks high. 
the property and casualty we're going to fix. Um, building maintenance. Sort of that sort of is what it is. The radio dispatches. Uh, gasoline and diesel. This year you've spent, and I realize we're just starting in the year, but one hundred and seventy eight dollars and you're budgeting two thousand. That seems That's, like. A, yeah. Excuse me, you're budgeting seventeen fifty. I'm look. I'm, but I mean, I would I would whittle that down unless there's some reason like something has been misposted or. I mean, one hundred seventy eight dollars, you can't drive one of those fire trucks around town for one hundred seventy eight dollars, I don't think, but maybe we don't need. Maybe we don't need 1750. Well, we can look into it for sure. Yeah, I would just, I would just ask you to, uh, to fine tune these numbers and at the same time get correct numbers from Dorinda uh, for the insurance. And do we know what this year's Capital West is gonna be Dorinda, we heard from them? I don't get the number. I think the fire department gets it first. Yeah, I, I haven't, haven't gotten anything. I haven't seen anything. Eric, are I don't you think on? they've made a decision on what it's going to cost yet. Well, yeah, maybe I know they were up in the air. Came to the list of people who get that information too. Um, I do know the insurances. They haven't come up with the rate yet for next year. They're hoping by. They were hoping for the first of the month, and it didn't happen. So yeah. Um, yeah. we're waiting on that for the whole town. But I just bring it. Um, for purposes, I just level funded it for now, and um, you know when the real number comes in, I can update it. Yeah, but we'll have it in plenty of time before we yeah. finalize our. Uh, Looks like it went up like thirteen hundred dollars, so you know from last year. So one would think it would, at a minimum, probably go up about that again. Um, Eric, you, yeah. you know, in line with what um, Liz has said. Excuse me. I believe we actually have information. Uh, I saw information that their rates are going down, all their rates, workers' comp, property, casualty, and auto. So, terrific. Great. No, oh, that's amazing. They don't usually go down. <laughs> well, it, the good news is we're in a, we're in a, uh, a trust with the League of Cities and Towns. Yep. So, if, if the trust has a couple of good years, and they don't have to spend at the claims that they planned on. They lower their rates. They adjust their rates up and down. They're not. They're not in it to make money. So uh, we get the benefit of that. And they've had a couple of good years, according to what I've read. So anyway, but we'll have those numbers. We'll have those numbers. Can I ask a question? Yep. Go ahead, Mary. Yeah. Go ahead, Mary. Eric, Eric um, at the bottom you talk about upcoming expenditures, and so. If you have a chance, could you tell us, like with the air packs, how many you anticipate you need? Is it like one of every active member and how much they generally run per person and how soon you need them all at once or just over a period I of think, time? Yeah, and like, I, I can answer that, Eric. Yeah. So when we looked at the prices last year, yeah. um, it was about $58,000 for eight packs. And that's to have uh, four packs on both engines. That's dropping, we would drop three from what we currently have. The problem we're in with our air packs is that in, <clears throat> in three years, um, Scott will stop making repair parts for them. And essentially they'll no longer, um, They'll service them, but once they once they run out of spare parts, that's it. The the packs can't be repaired. So while technically the the packs will no longer be supported in three years, will they all die in three years? No. However, when it comes time to replace packs, and we had this discussion um, the last time we talked about this, I gave you a heads up on this that we want no matter what we do, we want to go to all of the same packs on both trucks. So we're not having, oh, we've got this pack, which operates differently from the new pack. That's not a safe way to do things in the fire business. So we're looking at somewhere in the 58 to $60,000 range for eight packs. And um, 
our hope is that we'll only have to buy one air tank for each pack because our buying um, policy, what we're doing, the air tanks that we're currently getting to replace the ones that are dropping dead, which this month we have nine drop dead, um, the tanks will fit the same. We may have to get new valves for them, but currently a Scott air pack with a Scott valve costs $1,200. Um, we can knock that down to, I believe the price is just under 900 for the air tank alone. So we're into the phase now where we, we can just get air tanks and we swap the valves out. When we when it comes time to replace those air packs, once they start having problems where they no longer have the parts, we're gonna have to replace the whole batch. So Jeff, I'm confused. Go ahead, Liz. I was just gonna say, is this something that other fire departments are going to be um, also facing? Like all these people who have Scott air packs are gonna be facing and is there gonna be maybe some opportunity that we don't know about like for grants to help fire departments cover this kind of huge expense that we can't be the only fire department that has to do this. I don't know what the um, history it, of it, grants available for fire departments it, are. It depends on the, when the unit, when the department got their air packs as to when they're gonna expire. Um, a lot of the departments around us uh, Worcester for sure, and I believe Moortown have the MSA pack where we have Scott, Montpelier has Scott, and I believe Waterbury has Scott. But they're all on different. We're all on different purchasing times. Our air packs that we currently have were bought with a grant back in 2003 or early 2004. Home. So it just who, depends who on when a department has bought their latest packs. Who was the, um, who offered that grant? I believe it was the feds. Mm -hmm. It was before, before I was on the department. They got a lot of stuff, uh, the, the year before I was on the department. And I know that, that Montpelier has already gotten newer packs than we have. So J Jeff, Peter again. Um, so I'm confused. The numbers I believe you just gave us for packs and tanks don't anywhere near add up to $58,000 for eight of them. So somehow I misunderstood. No, that's the, the, the price I gave you is just for the actual air bottle, which we've been buying two a year to, to stay off the buying nine this year because nine are dropping dead so but the air pack itself is uh, i think it's like 5600 somewhere around there i'm not sure the exact price because it's been a while since we had them over to talk to us i got it but and it that, came up to i believe it was fifty eight thousand. and the air pack doesn't include so it must be more Pardon? Air, buy the air pack separately and then you buy the tank separately no you when you buy a brand new air pack, it comes with one tank. And when they bought, when they got these Scott air packs, they bought, um, you have 11 packs and they got 11 extra bottles. The, so hopefully what's going to happen is if we go to MSA, because those, um, those look like a much better system, the air bottles that we currently have, we'll be able to keep and have those as the extras and we'll only have to get the one bottle that comes with the price of the air pack. So the air pack, when you buy an air pack, that's the, the pack that you put on your back, the air bottle and the mask. Got it. Uh, so one other question, how long, I mean, and I realize it depends on how hard you're breathing and how hard you're working and, and whatever, but when you're, when you're breathing, through an air pack with an air bottle, how long does one bottle last? Approximately, I understand. Yeah, I mean, 15, 20 minutes. Okay. You uh, know, or five. It, it, what's that? Or five minutes. 
Yeah, I mean, it depends on the person. It depends on on the person. It depends on. There's a lot of variables. So you would send somebody in a burning building with an air supply that would only last for five minutes. Anyway, I I, I guess there's there, something I don't understand, but <laughs> I can't believe it's there, that. Well, I've been I've been scuba diving all my life, and I know the issues about breathing out breathing out of a uh, mm -hmm. breathing out of a, a compressed. Uh, air tank and yes it's variable but it isn't anywhere near that variable anyway enough uh other questions on the budget budget committee board members so eric somewhere somewhere along here when we get those insurance numbers and you're going to fine tune some of the other numbers you'll have a revised spreadsheet for us absolutely okay I have a question, another question Eric, can you also tell us a little bit um, now or later about the turnout gear? Like, how much do you need? How many? What does it cost? How soon do you need it? Those I, kinds. Of I don't know. I don't know if Jeff has gotten any prices on them. We, I haven't seen any prices on them yet. Um, but eventually, the all last, of last year the prices were somewhere between twelve and thirteen hundred dollars a piece. Yeah. Well, and, how many do you need? And how don't you have some already? The 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 ones we have are uh, ten years or older. We, well, we we got them when we were back in the old station. So, and uh, NFPA says ten years they should be replaced. And how many would you need to get then, Jeff? That's I'm counting up the numbers right now. Ten. One for each firefighter, right? What and what our plan is that we would do two a year. If you want to do it all at once, we can do that. We're looking at doing two a year and stretching it out over five years. I mean, if you want us to, we can do it all at once. But we're trying to to stretch it. You know, while NFPA isn't a regulatory body, um, if you if if there was an injury be, at a scene and the lawyers get involved and look at well you're and it, it happened to deal with turnout gear well your turnout gear is over 10 years old you're at fault for not replacing that turnout gear that's whether they would hold volunteers to that i don't know that's something for a lawyer to answer well the only comment I have on this is, you know, we have challenges ahead and these these are serious challenges, but they're also, I'm sure, and and Liz with a project she's working on is going to be asking you guys questions because what about the trucks? We know about the rescue. Um, you know, there's another there's another big, uh, big challenge coming down the coming down the pike. And yes, the idea of spreading things out over time when we can and make when it makes sense are a good idea but at the same time if there's anything i want to be sure of is a the trucks are safe and our volunteers have proper equipment when they go out to fight a fire so they can be safe and that to me is uh more important than almost anything else i mean if we get a flat tire on a truck or blow up an engine on a truck as long as somebody doesn't drive it into the ditch when that happens uh, that's an expense and it's an inconvenience, but it's not a catastrophe. If we lose a firefighter on a, at a scene uh, because they have outdated or improper equipment, that's a problem, a big time problem. So anyway. Yep. Eric, I have a question for sure. you uh, on those upcoming expenditures. Those, those three items, you weren't anticipating any, any expense in those items for this budget? Yeah, we really, yeah, we weren't thinking that for this fiscal year, we weren't thinking, thinking that that's why we didn't add it. Okay. But it was, it Did was, you... it's, 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 it's there to kind of say, all right, this is something we're going to have to start thinking about, you know, down the road. Okay. I just wondered if maybe, maybe you could, um, you know, like where air packs, you know, starting in 22 or 23 or whatever. Yep just kind of giving us an idea 
yeah, when you, we can, you would start. I can, yeah, I can add numbers wherever to kind of give you guys, you know, what just, what it might look like. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I was just wanted to clarify. I didn't think any of those numbers were in this budget yeah. and they're not going to be, correct? Right. Correct. Okay. Good. Thanks. Peter. Yes. I have Eric. two questions. One for Eric. Eric, um, sorry. I'm sorry, I got a phone call, so it kind of took, took my train away. Dorinda, I'll start with the question I had for you. What's the total amount last year we spent on the fire department when we did the consolidated budget? So just as a reminder, wasn't it like $161,000 or something in that neighborhood? No, I think it was 125,496. Oh wait, that's the budget for 21-22. So what number? Are you looking for what we actually spent in I'm the a, year I'm, that just ended? I'm interested in what we budgeted for the year that just ended. For the year that just ended or the year we're in? Well, we don't have the year we're in because that's only well, a we part. Got, we have budgeted amounts. We don't have actuals. Okay, sure. What, what, what did we budget? For the budget year we're in, we budgeted total 125,496. Great, and, and uh, the, the other question I have is for Eric. Eric, every year we've asked the fire department to give us a list of how many cases you were called on and responded to. And I don't know if you have that number, but if you don't, do you think you could get that to us? I don't have the number in front of me, but I, I could certainly get it. That would be great if we could get that before we get the you know other numbers on your budget and, and if there were any significant ones because I know that sometimes they're just minor little things on the interstate. Um, it would be helpful to know, you know, whether there were any really significant ones where our fighter fighters had to go and wear the equipment and have the use the air packs or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. Great. So Mary, we will be getting uh, we will be getting right off here an updated report from them, which will have that information. But you know, what do you mean we'll be getting an updated report, Peter? I'm sorry. We we can't, we, we submit those numbers every year in the town report, and we break out what number you know what how many calls went to each variety of of category. Well, can we get that report earlier rather than later? It's not going to be complete if we give it to you now. Well, it would be helpful to have for as far as the year is gone. I mean, are are you going on this? Are are you going this approach again? Well, we didn't use air packs this year, so we don't need them. Or what's Jeff? I'm asking a question. That's all. I want the statistics to justify your budget. That's all. So guys, what I would suggest is give us the numbers for the last fiscal year. In other words, ending ending June 30th or July 1. That's a complete calendar year. Right. For complete town financial year. Yep. That would be helpful. I mean, don't give us don't give us 9 months of numbers. That'll just confuse us. Thank you. Um, can okay. I just say one more thing? Um, so I just have been perusing the internet while we're talking just to see what kind of grants are available. There's nothing right now that, except for COVID stuff. Um, but like last year at this time, there were 16 federal grants of $2 million given to volunteer fire departments and other departments, not just volunteer in Vermont, specifically for the purchase of equipment, including air packs. So did you guys get, like, do you guys get notices? Like how you must get something that tells you that these kinds of grants are available. I'm not looking for them, but is someone getting this kind of we, information we that we could have applied last year? We might not have gotten it. I'm sure it was a tough application, but we, sh we need to be having our eyes out for this kind of thing. We, we haven't gotten those notices. Someone should be searching for them. Like someone should be like signing up to get, I mean, this is a FEMA. I mean, I would think that someone in your department has some connection with FEMA.
edema because you're you must have listservs you must have something as fire oh, department yes. people well i would say is if liz can find that information in 15 minutes you guys ought to be able to find it or or get her help to find it but i couldn't agree more we need to keep our eye out for that kind of stuff and not wait for somebody to call right. up and say hey there's a grant available and we're not the only town that struggles to raise money and that's why they have these grants to help towns like us now again i'm not saying but like it these are the kinds of things that we have to be looking for and applying for um you know i mean i mean maybe one of us on the select board needs to be on some sort of uh, alert system of of this kind of thing I just wouldn't know where to start. I mean, there must be some like firefighters association of America, you know, that you could start getting in from, I could start getting information from, but this is the kind of thing that it's like Bernie Sanders announced it on his website in October 30th, 2019, that $2 million went to 16 fire departments in Vermont for specifically for the exact same things we're looking for. So. Fair enough. Well, Eric, uh, but now we have Eric, so maybe he can take on that that uh, job of looking for those. Since are you now the treasurer of the of the fire department? Yes, recently, newly. Yes. Okay, so we have a whole new person to. Uh, and there to... are people who can help you with this. Like there's there's people in town who write grants for livings, right? Like, and they they would be willing to help. You know you guys figure it out because i'm telling you fema grants are horrible you don't want to apply i mean those are really tough grants mm -hmm. and so don't be afraid we've, we've of them already... because you know there's people who can help you with that we've gotten a, a fema grant in the past and yes it is a burly process mm -hmm. we got it for some we didn't get a tanker we got it for some video training Someone's yawning. Yeah. Yawning. Exactly. I, oh, what? <laughs> well, I think I, I think we have uh, we've done the fire department for tonight. Does anybody have anything else? Eric, thank you very much, and uh, I'm I'm sorry we're kind of throwing you under the bus here, and you're the new no, guy. I can take it. <laughs> we want to we want to work with you, but it's really important to get the best numbers we can get, which I'm yep, sure you. No, it's fair enough. Can I ask you one quick question, Eric? Are you from Waterbury originally? No. Oh, because they're Mataviers over there. That's why I asked. No, no, I'm originally from South Burlington. Gotcha. Okay, Mary, enough. We're going <laughs> to move on to- uh... I'm making connections. <laughs> I know, right. Mary. Thank you. Have a good night. Uh, thank you. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Thanks, Eric. Okay, so moving right along to the uh, Planning Commission. Sandy, are you still there? Yes. You're muted, Sandy. Uh, yes, I'm I'm here, as is um, Elias, who's also on the Planning Commission that I see. He, uh, yep. you know, he's also on the, um, the Budget Committee. And we, uh, the Planning Commission, um, took up the budget at our last meeting, and we um, submit, are submitting a budget for a total of eleven thousand dollars. It follows last year's budget with a, a bit of an increase in consultant fees, and that's to complete the zoning update. Um, we got a we received a proposal or from the Regional Planning Commission, which appears to be the entity that um, helps towns with their zoning updates. They couldn't start on the on. They couldn't start working with the town on the zoning update until this July, and um, the proposal we have from them um, totals about seventeen thousand um, dollars, and that's roughly in line as I as I provided in, in what I, I shared with the select board. That's roughly in line with what other towns have um, have spent for zoning updates in in the recent past and including Middlesex in 2003 received a grant and spent $15,000 for a zoning update. Um, I had hoped we could do it for less, but um, that doesn't doesn't seem possible given a 
a need to update a number of pieces of the, the of the zoning. Certainly, we could take on less of the zoning, smaller sections of it, or not do community outreach. Um, but we sliced and diced it among the planning commission a number of different ways, and felt that the the seventeen thousand dollars, and that would be spread over about two years time. Um, we could certainly get it, get the work done, do a good zoning update that would, you know, last for a number of years going forward. I included in what I sent the actual proposal from the Regional Planning Commission, which breaks down um, how, how we would um, tackle the zoning update. We would do it in about four, uh, four sections and complete one section before we move on to the next dedicate one specific planning commission meeting to get public input on that that section um, and and then go on. I think I think that makes sense rather than trying to do all the drafting all the way at the end when when it's completely done. So I think it's it's a good a good process and a good and a reasonable um, cost or fee or fee for that. We have some of that in the budget this year and we'll spend that for this year and then this would be for the following year. So just just FYI before before Liz asks the question, um, there are grants available for this type of thing. Um, we got a grant this year, and we've applied for another grant uh, that had to do with the uh, village planning process, um, potentially if we wanted to put off our zoning, um, we could apply for a grant in the same time frame next year, but that would mean we would have no money to spend, even if we got the grant, which we might not get it, uh, until the December time frame. Is that right, Randy? Yeah, my understanding is the, um, the, um, plan the planning grants that are available, the deadline is sometime in October, and I think they let you know Within a couple of months after that, and so it would be for the following year. Um, I, you know, I, I couldn't. We couldn't anticipate that we would get that grant, or that even that. that, that as, as you know, the a town can't can't apply for more than one, and so I didn't want to assume that the planning commission would be the entity in the town that would be applying for a grant for next October. Um, you know, this is. As you know, this is the challenge of, of coming up with your budget now for what you're going to be spending starting July 2021. Oh, we know, believe me. <laughs> but well, I, you know, I, I, I can certainly envision the Planning Commission seeking a grant for, it would at that point be roughly $10,000 to complete zoning. We could submit that application in October and that would roughly cover what we're looking for from um, in the budget for for next year. It's the same time frame. Yeah. Well, I guess, and this is just me speaking. I don't know how others feel, but you know, I think it's important to go ahead with the zoning. We've been putting it off. Probably what it makes sense to do, unfortunately, is put the seventy five hundred dollars in next year's budget, so it's in there. But at the same time at the same time apply for the grant. And if we're lucky enough to get it, then we have some extra money to cover some other, uh, some other disaster. I just, it's discouraging to me when the towns around us get grants to do this and we're asking the taxpayers to pay for it. But it is what it is, I understand. Uh, questions, budget committee, board members? Sandy. <laughs> Does that make sense to everybody that that approach? I think so. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yep, I agree. Right. Um, so let's not let's make sure I'll I'll put it on my uh, on my little so we would work on that in, in the August and September time frame, Sandy. I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't catch that. If we go for the grant, we would be doing the grant paperwork in, in uh, August or September, September, October, when? Yeah, it, it would be due in October. So we would be working on that in August and September and I'll make sure that we 
um, you know, keep that on our on our list of things to do. Okay, and I will I will put it on. And my confirm list. with the select board that a you know the planning commission that that we should be looking for the grant for next year as opposed to some other entity within town. Yep. Yep. Great. That you mean that's the when you say that when you say only one entity can apply, you're talking about the state, or are you talking about? No, I'm sorry. The, the town would only be allowed to get to have one grant at a time, and this year, uh, uh, from who the grant from who? Um, who? This is a grant from the state. They have a planning grant um, program. But I mean, it wouldn't. It wouldn't keep some other. Okay, I'm just trying to see what when you're trying to preclude other people applying for grants, like what kind of right. So if there was a second phase to the capital budget planning that the town is doing that they were would be interested in getting an additional grant for that the town would need to figure out, a, you know, the select board would need to decide which which entity in town or which project should move forward to seek a grant. But it's only for planning, it's not other things. Right, I, I believe so, yes. Gotcha, thank you. Municipal planning grant program. Okay. So it's, it's, used, it's often used for things like um, town plans or budget planning, you know, uh, those sorts of things. Yep. Questions, anyone? Okay then, I think we have, yes, Dorinda. I have a question that doesn't relate to this, but while Sandy's here, the last payment to the village grant is being made this week. Um, so who is going to be drawing down on that grant? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't I, I totally hear all of that. Okay. Um, we, my understanding was we had to make the final payment to Du Bois and King. The check was written this week. Um, so who and when will the grant be drawn down for the final payment? We, um, we need to submit, my understanding is we need to submit a report and then we can get our final payment on the grant. Um, I think it's it, it's not me. I think it's been Mitch and one of the select board members who are the responsible entities to um, take action on that grant. We can't write the report. I have no idea what to say in the report. You're right that only somebody can actually do the physical button pressing, but I don't. I wouldn't know what to say. So somebody has to write that piece. Okay, I'm ha I'm happy to help help write the report. I don't have any of the any of the documents, so I don't I don't know. I can check with with Mitch. Um, I know I had a I had a brief conversation with him a month or so ago. You know, recognizing that you know, the work is done, we need to get it submitted um, so we can get but we can get our final our final payment. I will I'll double check with him. Okay, well, let's I think it's just like a little spreadsheet that says what items were completed. And I think Mitch can just load it up and let us know that it's loaded up. And then I think I have the capacity to submit the button and Peter does and Phil does. Some bizarre group of us has that ability. Um, but I wouldn't have any idea what to say on the final report. So, but the last time it happened, Mitch had put the stuff in there he just didn't realize that it wasn't being seen by anyone and that's why it never got submitted um until i okay. got in touch with them to figure it out i i will double check with mitch and i will copy you liz to make okay. sure that what needs to get done gets done and if i can help by providing any information or text or something for the report i'm happy to do that okay. thanks sandy thanks. would just be it would just be great if we could get the money before we have to pay the vendor, but I understand. Yeah, the, the final the final payment the town has to pay, I think they do that to make sure that you pay your share and then they reimburse it. Well, it's but all it, done, so. Thank you. Okay, good. Okay, I would say that concludes our uh, budget workshop for this evening.
we are uh, a little over time, but good discussion. Anything else, uh, Budget Committee members? No, just thanks everyone. Yep. Thank you. Be back for the next session. Okay. Can I can I ask? Was Bill Dorgan here? I don't. He, I didn't see Bill Dorgan, but he was Bill, not. Bill here. was so. going to come for the first part of this, but I don't think he made a. He had a conflict. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, guys. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay, so we're now into our regular meeting, completing the municipal impact review for a proposed octagon building at Camp Mead action likely. Um, I have the thing in front of me. Uh, it's pretty simple and straightforward, I think, although we should have asked the fire department when, when they were here for their, uh, for their input. But most of these things, you all have this in front of you, I'm sorry. Yeah. So what this says is, does the municipality have the capacity to provide the following services without unreasonable burdens for the above project? And the categories are fire protection, police protection, rescue service, road maintenance, solid waste disposal. Well, the bottom line is <laughs> most of those services we don't provide, but we do provide fire protection. And I guess the question is, are we come? So if, if you remember, and they attached a copy of the building permit and diagrams and everything, I mean, it's a wood frame, two story uh, building. I forget how many square feet it is. I looked at it, but it, it's not a, it's not a gigantic building. It's no bigger than a large, uh, than a large house would be. So my guess would be the answer to the fire protection question is yes, or excuse me, Yes, we have the capacity to provide the following services, but probably we ought to run that by the fire department. I can call call Jeff and ask him that question. Police protection, obviously, is a no. We don't do that. Rescue service, uh, that's the fire department again. Uh, solid waste disposal is a no. And, and road maintenance, unless you disagree, Steve, I can't see that there would be any road maintenance associated with that. No. <laughs> There's none. So do we check uh, municipality does not provide this service because yeah. it's the state? Okay. So what I would suggest is with, with, the, uh, with the board's approval um, that I would, I would connect up with, with Jeff and get his confirmation that we can yes, both the fire protection and rescue service, then would the deficiencies occur without this project? We're not saying we have any deficiencies, so that's that's a non-issue. If the deficiencies are common to many projects, does this project create burdens which are disproportionate to the taxes? I would say the answer to that is is no. And are you available after sufficient notice to answer questions related to the above statement at an Act 250 hearing? I guess the answer would be lucky me, yes. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I can't imagine that, that this is going to create any issues. There's, there's a similar, similar questionnaire uh, that the school has to complete, although it's different, uh, yeah. different questions. But we've approved the building permit, uh, and this is just part of the Act 250 process. Bill, do you have anything to add? Because I noticed that there was a hearing before the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Um, uh, yeah, there was. We actually heard, I think, uh, four different pieces from Planetary Matters, all somewhat interconnected, but standalone projects. The the only issue that we raised, and they, you know, it was really good presentation, but they originally were looking for three stories, and um, that in that area, a third story requires a waiver, and we weren't particularly excited uh, about granting that because they um they really didn't have a specific idea about that third story so it looks to me that they've backed off from that at this point and are are simply going to go with the the two story but otherwise it was a 
It was a good presentation. I think it's a good plan. It says here that they, they want to use it commercially, retail, office, and residential. I mean, they're really going to have somebody live there, do you think? Based they, might, on their uh, they might have an apartment or two, but I suspect it's going to be more of the commercial um, office space. Um, I think there's a plan to have um, the cheese aging cellar, and they've got somebody lined up who's going to actually do use the basement um, for <clears throat> for that, um, and then it, and then again uh, different kinds of small professional offices, and then I think there was a good size um, meeting room that they were looking at doing. You know, I think the residential thing is more of a backup if the if the commercial spaces don't pan out, they've got the possibility of having a couple of couple of apartments in there on I think on the second floor. Bill, where do you say that it's not three anymore? It says three on the application. It does? Yeah, in handwriting. Hold it on. says description of proposed project, three story octagon shaped building. Um I gotta find the um I'm it's looking on, um it's Go I ahead. think that was the original application, Liz, maybe. I don't have those documents up in front of me, but I did look it over. This is the one that, that has an approved applicant copy on it. Yeah. Uh, let me. I just found it. Let me take a look. I think at the bottom it says, applicants shall not have a restaurant in the building without further approval of the board, and applicants shall comply with Section 3.5 yeah. of these regulations concerning height requirements. That's what you said in this this decision that's got a lot of parts to it on August 25th. Right. Bill, it's at the bottom of that first application. So I think that then they must, they're considering the third story to be the basement area because it's going to be essentially commercial space and it's open on the back, it's completely open um, and that basically becomes ground level. Somewhere they said how many feet it was gonna be above grade and it was like 22 or 24 feet. So that can't be three stories. No. Yeah, where did they say that, Peter? In the application? I don't have the documents up in, up in front of me. Yeah. I don't either, but, but you're right, Peter, there was a height yeah on there i don't have that documents up either oh it says height 34 feet on the right. okay yeah okay and then that's three stories that is where did you see that mary it's, it's on this thing that we're looking at i can share it if someone gives me the right I've, to share I've, I've got it i just don't know where it's not did you look I, at the planning I, commission uh if you look at the planning commission detail from their decision they've got more details in there too but it's the application for zoning permits. They originally wanted- uh, if could, Guys, if I could just interrupt you. Um, this is all well and good, but the permit's approved. We're not reviewing the permit. Right. We're, what we're reviewing is this is this little form we have to make out. So um, sometimes we want to have further discussion about the approved permit. I guess we can do that, but the permit's approved. Well, it's just interesting that people thought it was different. That's all. Well, when I, I and I'm sorry if I screwed yeah. it up, when I looked through it, I believed when I got through it that it was two stories, but I don't have the thing in front of me now and I can't remember where I saw that. So maybe uh, I'm wrong. Well, the decision it does say hereby approves application 2001 with the conditions that was stated above. And, and the stated above was that. Um, can't have a restaurant without further approval and they comply with the regulations 3.5 concerning height requirements. So well, I don't know what those- What is the height requirement in 3.5, Bill, do you know? Right, I, no, not off the top of my head. But yeah, in the original application, they asked for 34 feet. Right. But I don't, I believe that was an issue. I'm trying to just scroll down through. I don't know. This was a 
a while ago. So I'm, I'm looking through the uh, zoning regulations to see if I oh, can. Thanks. Find. Oh, thanks, Sarah. Sarah, are you there? Thirty-five. Uh, thank you for running a terrific election with all of your people. Yeah, thank you. There weren't that many people. Dorinda gets the. Uh, Dorinda, Dorinda gets the prize. Okay, Dorinda, thank you as well. I mean, we had no problems at our at our polling spot, and it's a lot of work done by you guys, you women. Well, Sarah did a lot of pre-organization and pushing people to vote early. Yep. Sorry, I'm just looking through the. Hold on. Oh, I didn't realize I wasn't prepared for zoning. Yeah. Well, we I don't have that in front of me either, but I believe it's 35 feet. Oh, it is? I believe it is. So the 34, they came in a foot under. They put it a foot under, yes. So the I question. I believe I'm right, but I don't have that in front of me. So we don't know whether they count the basement as a floor and there's two but on to top. Peter's point, are we going to continue no, discussing this? No, it's done. I guess what I'm confused by is that zoning 3.5 is existing non-conforming small lots. So that's why I'm, oh. that's how I'm confused. Well, you know, the other thing we don't know, and I was, I was trying to understand the plans and I'm pretty good at understanding plans, but I'm not perfect. Um, you know, you can say, so that's, you know, three floors with a with a 10 foot ceiling height and, and no space for no space for structure. Maybe the first floor has a higher ceiling. I have no idea. Uh, I can't remember. No, it's two floors, but I could be wrong. I think it's three. OK, it's three point six. What's it say? I'm trying to match it up to it. Three point six section. I, I, that's why I'm confused. It should say 3.6 of the height requirements, not 3.5. Um, I can go through the height requirements for you um, if you really care. Um, it says the maximum height of structures in all districts shall not exceed the district maximum except as permitted under subsection B or for the following agriculture, steeples, accessory structures, um, when that includes things like, you know, chimneys, antennas, flagpoles. And it says the Board of Adjustment may permit sub, sub, permit structures in excess of the district standard upon finding the following doesn't, you know, it has to be a bunch of conditions. So, you know, can't be used for advertising purposes. It's, it's uh, it has the portion of the structure above the district maximum height shall remain unoccupied except for normal maintenance. So things like that, which I guess is what the ZBA was talking about when they said you can't, you can't put anybody up there in that top floor. Yeah. You can't put a restaurant on that top floor. Right. Yeah. I'm wondering now, I, I mean, I, I'm trying to visualize the plans. And for some reason, I'm thinking that that third story may in fact just be a cupola. I think it is just kind of like a pitch of some sort, some sort of almost decorative. Yeah. Yeah. In which case, it wouldn't be a big deal. That would fall under kind of like the steeple category. Yeah. yeah. Zoning. So getting back to this delightful little state of Vermont form, is everybody comfortable with the approach that I outlined? Yep. Aren't there two pages, Peter? The One second page page. Of school, Mary. Oh, okay. I'm not doing the school. So I will uh, I will get a hold of Jeff and make sure he agrees, Sarah, and I will sign this and can I scan it back to you or do I need to deliver it to you? I'm sure you can scan it back to me. Okay, I will do that. Thank you, Peter. Hopefully, uh, hopefully tomorrow. I won't be here. You will not oh. be here. You're actually uh -huh. a day off. Someday I'd like to take a day off. Tomorrow is Veterans Day and I actually thought I would take off Thursday. There you go. Yes, day off. Good Ooh. job. 
Nice. I only have 240 more vacation hours to go. I know. I know. I know. That's another issue we have to deal with at some point. Um, okay, so that takes care of that. Highway report. Steve. There. I unmuted myself. Um, we've been doing just a, a, a lot of um, little things to catch up, uh, you know, b before the winter really sets in. Um, doing some, we're still doing some road grading and spot grading and on some roads. Uh, they've been doing that quite a bit. Uh, we've put up some signs. We got a couple more signs that are ordered and that will go up. Uh, we've put up some gates at the. Uh, at the town garage so that people can't drive down around back. We put sand up by the old uh, town garage for people to be able to get some stuff. Um, I'm going to be short uh, people over the next couple of weeks. I've got, I'm out one, one guy today, tomorrow, Thursday and Friday for the rest of the week. And, uh, he actually, if everything goes right, he's uh, cataract surgery. And if that goes right, he's going to, the following week, he's going to do the other eye. Um, so I, I've got that covered. Everybody's got stuff to do. Uh, we got trees around town that are on the side of the road that need to be taken care of. Uh, we're not going to be taking care of all of them, but we're going to try to take care of some of the smaller ones uh, that we can handle and get those done um and and that's basically all i have uh, right now we we do have a uh, borns energy is putting wants to put in a larger propane tank up at the town garage so we prepared an area it's double in size of what we've got uh, so capacity wise so we made sure that they've got room to do their work and that happens on the 16th but uh, other than that, I don't have anything unless somebody's got some questions. Steve, um, I was talking to Ray Hickory and he, he, uh, he has some complaints about the highway department and I said I would mention them to you uh, and that I thought that perhaps you would give him a call. So rather I can, than I can do that, I will I will give him a call. I'm going to ask him to put you know the complaints or whatever, probably put it in writing to the select board. That's how I'd like people to do it. So we've got this, we've got the paper trail. You know, people complain or or do whatever or got questions, then they get answered. Make sure they get answered. Well, I doubt it. Yes, I will call him. I figured if you called him, then you would have heard them. You would have heard, but I doubt he'll put it in writing. Well, <laughs> and we should require him to put it in writing. I mean, I, I, telephone calls are great, but then the memory of what's on the telephone call fades over time. Well, I figure Steve could probably answer a lot, some of the questions. I, I don't think him. we should require people to put their complaints in writing. That's what we're here for, for phone calls. I think that's asking too much. Right. I think that if we want to put it in writing, then that's what we do is that we write it down for the record right. that we had a conversation. And I think that's what we should do uh, and try to try to keep that going. I will call him, see what he what he's got. He might not like my answers or he maybe will. I don't know. I don't know what his questions or complaints are. Well, uh, I however, I will advise him that he could just put everything in writing. Down through all the years, Ray has never been happy with the way we take care of our roads, FYI. So. <laughs> just saying that I didn't want to go into it on, when we're on television. I mean, you know, Orca. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> that's a fact. Um, anything else, Steve? No, that's it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, approval of October 20th, 2020 select board minutes. Is there a motion? You, you missed the, the treasure. treasure. You forgot oh, me. 
You forgot yeah. our Dorinda. How could I forget Dorinda? <laughs> so patient I am. Um, just a couple. Uh, I when I was saying early back on the budget while I was sitting here looking. I gave you the wrong number of what we spent last year. We actually spent $141,394 on the fire department. I knew the fire. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, I'm looking at the wrong column. I apologize. That's all right. Um, the, uh, I have uh, one great piece of good news that you're probably all gonna be happy to hear. We received notice that, and the money, that we're giving an extra $30,702 in state highway aid. Wow. For the current budget year. <laughs> Steve <That's>, excited. <laughs> how did that happen? <laughs> it's a- We're not they, gonna ask questions. <laughs> They've already given us the money. <laughs> They appropriated another seven million one-time transportation fund monies um, to the budget. So that's our portion of it. Wow. Great. So that's uh, that's good news. It that's is. It. it is. So we should we should so that is that is this fiscal year that we're in, correct? Yeah. Correct. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, and that's all I got. I'm sure we're going to put that to use, but let's let's be sure we have a plan to spend that money in the best possible way. I'm sure, Steve, you'll have some ideas on how to do that. <laughs> I will do my best. Yeah, thank you, Dorinda. Where, where's the was warrant number one and warrant number warrant number three? Did they overlap at all? Because I thought it, they had the same end amounts. Like eight hundred seventy-eight thousand dollars. I mean, I just and I was reading through them. I didn't. Are you talking the two columns? No, I'm talking warrant one, which is eight hundred seventy-eight, and then warrant three was eight seventy-eight, and I didn't. It was I didn't just pay payroll and let's see. I think I printed them out. Hang on. I thought you said three warrants. No, but one was an edit list. One's an okay. edit list, and one was the actual warrant, and then the other was payroll. Uh, yeah. So, what's the edit list? I guess I didn't understand that. The so edit list gives there. a more ex explanation of what the checks are. It's a little more detail in okay. your lack of being able to review the actual bills. We're trying to give you a little bit more information. Great. Okay, that's what I thought. Thanks. Yep. Okay. Any questions for Dorinda? No, oh, but that's good news. I can never, I can never remember her only having good news. There's always been the good news, bad news, or the bad news, bad news. We like good news, Dorinda. Yeah. Smiling. Well, I like that one, and we already got the check. That's even better. Oh, well, you did see we paid out the school. That was our big check in this check run. Yep. And it was actually, um, it was, and we have to do another one in December. So, yep. and that'll be another 833 at the end of December. God bless our schools. Okay. Now. I believe it's appropriate to approve our October 2020 minutes. This is a motion. So, so moved. moved. Second. <laughs> Who seconded? Liz. 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 Didn't you move it? I tried, and Phil, Phil and I did it at the same exact time. <laughs> Just by the nose. <laughs> Photo finish. Okay. All those in favor of approving the October 20 minutes, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, we have approved our minutes. Uh, orders, you got enough people to respond, Dorinda? I I've respond. only got, I only had two before the select board meeting. I'll, I'll look at them after the meeting. I, I didn't have a chance before. I, re I looked through them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, correspondence. Nope. 
Zip off. Zip off. Perfect. Any other matters that may come before the board? I see. I just want to say that uh, we have a meeting next Tuesday, as you know, um, because the fun never ends. I was going to take a couple of days off, but it, that would be impossible. I'm going to send that agenda out on uh, Saturday. And I just wanted to know you guys to know that one of the topics is going to be uh, taking advantage of the legislature's um, COVID decision allowing towns to suspend town meeting for one year coming up. So I figure it's a good idea unless you guys can see any objection to bringing that up at the next meeting. No. I'm As sorry, why are we having a meeting on Tuesday already? Because life sucks. It normally have been on election day. Oh, right. And then Thanksgiving's coming up and nobody wants to, so that's why. Sarah, I can take your notes for you if you want to take that day off. No, no, that's okay. But thank you very much, Liz. I mean, Please. it's not that, you, you should not say that you can't do something it's, because you have to take it's notes. More, it's more like planning for it. So, and the other thing I wanted to get from the sense of the board to quote Bill Callan is, uh, do you need other, do you need like the Conservation Commission to come, they're meeting on Thursday. Do you need them to actually come to the board or do you think like if they just submit something that that's enough for you guys? I mean, I know you like to grill the fire department um, and the planning commission, but the, do you need everybody else or are you kind of, okay? I think the Conservation Committee. Uh, I mean, when we're Zooming, it shouldn't be that big an inconvenience for somebody to zoom in and Okay. So I'd like to hear from them. Okay. I'd like to hear from them too, because then they realize they're asking for money and we're making a decision about how I know, much but every year we go through this and you say, why do we have these people come in? We can just do this without them. So, you know, that? Back, oh, <laughs> yes, you do. Now they don't have to come in. The, in the future, in the future, if we ever, ever get back to in-person meetings, we can make a decision. But right now, when all somebody has to do is jump on the Zoom for 15 minutes, Okay, well then, what about the Cemetery Commission? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, they might be in December. I think maybe next week all you're gonna get is this, is the uh, is the Conservation Commission. Is Highway on next week? Oh yeah, that's another one. Where'd Steve go? I'm, I just unmuted myself. Yeah, I'm gonna try to have a preliminary budget for next Tuesday's meeting. Okay, so we'll have the highway department, we'll have the conservation commission, and we'll talk about uh, town meeting. Sounds have good. You, have you talked to um, Mitch about doing something for the rec committee, or how's that going to shake out? He this was, year? He was, he was uh, CC'd. We, you know, we do have December. Right. No, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, I just you. want to make sure everybody's been contacted. I did do a whole blanket, a blitz email, but I will, okay. uh, I'll reach out to Mitch as well. So we'll have Mitch and the ZBA doesn't have a, they don't really have a budget. Um, and the highway department's big and the cemetery commission, I don't know when they're gonna come through. I assume December. Well, I, I said that in a little bit of a snarky manner. That is, seems like we should hear from the cemetery. What, what does everybody else think? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to book that for December, if that's okay. Sarah, um, do you think enough people will know about our discussion about possibly canceling town meeting? I mean, so that it won't be a surprise if, you know, we decide it next Tuesday? I honestly completely don't think how you, that there's any way you can meet. I mean, I just don't see that it's possible. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying is there enough notice so that people won't go around saying, oh my God, the select board decided we didn't even know it was on the agenda. I mean, maybe you could put it on front porch forum or well, you always do. With the well, agenda. would you like me to put it on the first? That's why I'm bringing it up now. Would you like me to put it for the first meeting in December? You just can't kick it down the road because we're going to have to, it's going to, it's going to impose a certain timeline on us if we have to create ballots that are available 45 days before the election. Um, you know, I think, I think, I think it's a no brainer. I don't think we have any choice. So I think we make the decision and then make sure we communicate it to everybody. I, okay. don't, I don't think there's anything really to talk about. It's virtually impossible to have town meeting. How are you going to have a, a zoom meeting with 
a hundred people on it and have <laughs> elections and votes and things like that. It's impossible. Well, not only that, but it eliminates a certain member portion of the population. I mean, there are people who don't have computers and even people who have computers have crappy internet service in, in uh, Middlesex. So that's why I think the legislature did what they did. So what it means, guys, is just so you can be thinking about this, is there's been a lot of discussion over the years and Dorinda is, is pursing, her, pursing her lips that <laughs> the money items should be on a ballot well, guess <clears throat> this year they're going to be on the ballot. So this is a good, a good test case, a one-year test case to see how that works and what kind of participation we get. And so what you're saying is we still have to have um, people coming to vote or something on town meeting, correct? What I would yep. envision is that what Peter and I were talking about, which is doing kind of following the Secretary of State's cue. And now that we've got a kind of tidy uh, list, a, a checklist, um, mailing every single person in Middlesex a ballot. I would, we'll just use the same, I mean, well, I'm just gonna use the voter list. We'll send them, we'll send them town reports and we'll send them ballots. And uh, that way they can come here and vote on town meeting day as opposed to going to the school because I don't think it's right to infect the school. No. Um, and then they can early vote like they did for the general election. And we should have some kind of informational meeting. You know, and that can be, <laughs> that can be just, what? On Zoom. <laughs> okay. I, I didn't hear what you said, Sarah. I just, but I just don't know how we'll have an informational meeting on Zoom, but okay. Yeah, I think you guys oh, can do that. I, I, We're gonna have a, you can't send out a ballot and a, and a report and just say, here it is, good luck. I think we should, I mean, that's my take on it, is that we should give people the opportunity to ask questions. So I would recommend we have a Zoom informational meeting, but there won't be any voting. But we can talk about that uh, at the next meeting. Yeah, we'll try to find out what other towns are, how they're dealing with this. Yeah. And that's next Tuesday. So today is the 9th, and so that will be on the 14th. Right. right. Unless you want me to postpone, unless you want me to make a bigger deal out of that and say, we're going to talk about that the first meeting of December and just put, you know, notices on front porch form. You, it's up to you. I'm just trying to get a feel before I, before I do this, try to feel what you guys want to do when you want to talk about this. I like letting a lot of people know we're thinking about it. So then it's not a surprise. I mean, it makes that eminent sense, but I just think it's important to make sure people know about it. I haven't seen anything in the press about this at all. Yeah, Has I don't know why. Else? I'm sorry? Have you seen anything in, in any of the press about this? I haven't seen anything in the press. I've been just watch. I just looked at the Vermont League of, Town, League of Cities and Towns board right. about it. Yeah. The first, the, you know, your first meeting on Tuesday... Meeting. Your first meeting is the first of December. So you, I mean, you're getting, an, that would be an early-ish meeting if yeah. you want to do that. Do I you think we can discuss it at our next meeting. You want to discuss it at your next meeting? Okay. Okay, well, I vote. You know, the, you know the, <laughs> it's all going to be, it's all going to be over sweeping us quick, quickly enough, but I truly don't, I mean, we can make a decision about the informational meeting, but in terms of how we're going to, how we're going to have people vote. I don't think there's anything to talk about. Right. I no. mean, the, the, I guess the only other thing to talk about is mm. if we want to, uh, I'm looking at myself, my glasses are all crooked. I look like <laughs> a duck or something. I apologize. Um, hey, but by the way, guys, these are the new eyes and man, they're working. Good. Little baby reading glasses only. Everything else is crystal clear. Wait, you had cataract surgery? And my other eye fixed. Yep. Double vision is gone. If you see me driving at night, I won't be coming down the middle of the road, weaving back and forth. So that'll be a good thing. Well, that's what you did with Liz. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that was a little different situation. <laughs> it was more than that. All I'm saying, guys, is I really, I've, I've been thinking about this and it just, to me, yes, the other choice is we don't mail out ballots to everybody. We make people request them, but I don't think that's the right approach. I think we yeah, may I, have to everybody, but we can yeah. talk about that also. 
So we're going to we're going to talk about this December 1st. Is that the consensus? I like December 1st, but I might be the only one. I will send you a copy of Acts 162, which is the which allows a legislative body to use uh, Australian ballot ballot for any town meeting in 2021, any town meeting, including special meetings. Yeah. So, OK, let's, let's make a decision about when we're going to talk about this. Peter, I, I thought I thought it should be at, at our next meeting that she brought up first. Just because of what you said, it shouldn't take too long to, I mean, there are some areas of a lot of discussion, but for the most part, we can make a decision and put it out there so that everybody knows. Yeah. And I think the earlier, the better. I I agree with Steve. I think I'd, I'd rather do it, you know, next time around. I, I, normally, I wouldn't have been here because I had would have had surgery yesterday, but this network hack has postponed everything. Everything. There's a better chance that I'll I will be at the meeting next week. Possibly not though in December. So. Well, that's a good. Yeah. So I'd rather talk about it next week. I just want to make sure people know, and they're not. You no, know. I, yeah. That's all. It was just a question of notice, so people don't come. They all. Oh, they do all this stuff without telling you what they're going to do. Well, yeah. I will also put something on Friend Porch forums. It's a separate link. Like I ju I'm just sending you guys the VLCT link for how, a town, how to do this, how to, what is available to towns for town meeting in 2021 under the COVID restrictions. And Peter's right, you do need an informational meeting. So, I mean, that has to happen. And if I just put that separately out there on Front Porch Forum, then people can read it ahead of time and they can, you know, at least have some information because it does have links and, you know, a toolkit, so to speak. That'd be great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have I have one other quick thing. Uh, Dorinda and I have been having some uh, back and forth with our auditor about uh, some accounting issues and problems with the audit, and we have some thoughts about potentially reorganizing the way we do our accounting process. And I'd like to talk about that at our. Uh, at our next meeting. Does that work for you, Dorinda? Okay, thank you. So if you put that on the agenda. That's a big thing then, we heavy topics. Mm. Well, we've had some, I mean, we're, we don't want to get into it tonight. We've, we've had some, we've had some issues and we need to figure out how to resolve them going forward. So okay. that was not, fi not financial issues. Yeah, there's no money missing. There's no, no. No issues like that. But, uh, yeah. Let's let's get that in the record. Just saying. All the money. Dorinda, Dorinda hasn't been booking any world round the world cruises or uh, buying a second home in Florida. <laughs> anyway, so if you would if you would put that with Dorinda's consent, put that on the. Uh, I'll put it under the treasurer report. Yeah. So what about, the, can I just ask one other question? How are we doing on getting a new zoning administrator? That's coming through the planning commission. We've advertised and uh, uh, I talked to one candidate who was worried. So Sandy and I developed an ad and we ran the ad twice in the Times Argus. Um, we have, uh, we, I do have two candidates who are interested. One of the candidates was put off by the number of hours required and does not know if she can do the number of hours required in the ad. The other candidate is submitting a, a, an application. And so is one of the candidates the person who was doing it before? Yes. But as you know, it goes through the Planning Commission, from the Planning Commission to the Select Board. Yeah, I do know that. Okay, just want to be clear, because that's their thing. Right. Okay. Anything else, anyone? No. See you next week. We'll be right back here before you know it. No. Uh, well, no, next week, like there was last Tuesday on election day. <laughs> Every Tuesday, I'll be living here. <laughs> Peter, should I call you now when we get off? All right, All right. Bye. Bye. This is a good time for you. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, thank you. Call